Lord, be here again and just pray to continue to strengthen us, that we may continue to be loved and blessed by him. Amen. We're going to read this morning <clears throat> from Psalm 103. Let us pray, if you will. Heavenly Father, as we have gathered together, Father, to bless your holy name. Lord, we thank you for all that you have done for us, Lord, and all that you are doing. Father, we pray that you will continue to guide us. Father, we can see this world around us falling apart. Lord, let us hold fast unto you that we may be strong, Lord, regards to what happened in this world or how it happened that we know that you love us and that you will always care for us. We ask you to bless and to see around us, Father, that we be able to help and pray one for another. God, we ask you to bless those that are in the Sunday school classes this day. Father, help them to understand the word that they are receiving, that it become a part of their lives and in their hearts. We ask you to bless our pastor this morning, Father, his studies, and praise upon your word to bring forth unto us. God, that we all together may receive and be blessed by it. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all Thy diseases. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfied thy mouth with good thing, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. He will not always sigh, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, and remembers that we are dust. As for a man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over him, and is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto the children's children. To such as keep his commands, I to those The Lord has prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength that do his commandments, hearkening to the voice of the word. Bless ye, the Lord, all his hosts, ye ministers of his, that do his pleasure. Bless, Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Thank you. God bless you. Be seated. I want to see you Open the eyes of my heart, Lord Open the eyes of my heart I want to see you Amen I want to see you To see you high Shining in the light of your glory. Amen. Pour out your power and love that we say. Holy, holy, holy. I am living. 
Father's Day to Amen. all of the fathers. Amen. Amen. We had a great time up in the weekend, or, or the day there, Thursday and Friday, and yesterday up in the mountains there with the, the kids and played and have a good time. We had a real good time, good fellowship. We found a group of people up there hunting Bigfoot, and they were serious. They were hunting Bigfoot. I told the guy, I said, well, we found him a long time ago. I said, you find him over in Genesis where the, he, he was there, the missing link between man and the monkey. And he said, well, I heard some things in the Bible, you know. I said, well, I said, he, he was turned out and made a snake. I said, if you find these snakes crawling around out here, you might find Bigfoot. But then we found a snake, a big old rattlesnake came into camp and I guess wanted to fellowship, but we didn't have much trouble with disfellowshipping him. We kind of took him apart in a few places, you know, <clears throat> but <laughs> everything's all right. We called Luke. He found him, Luke, and we called him Hawkeye because he found Luke. But it's good to see everybody in the house of the Lord. We're glad to have our visitors with us. And as we always say to you, when you come here, you come one time. You're a visitor, you come two times, you're part of us because we don't have anything to join up with or anything to do like that. But we're glad to have little Coco back there. She's visiting with Abby and, and Thomas and having a good time. So glad to have her with us. Amen. If you'd like to turn in your scriptures, let's go to John 10, and then we'll go to Ephesians 3. Is that all the announcements? Remember the fellowship meeting will be at Brother Longoria's the third Saturday in July. So keep these in mind. Any other announcements? That's all that we know of. Okay. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and your grace, Lord, unto us. Thank you for understanding us, Lord, and being with us and guiding us and keeping us, Lord, in your love. And we just ask you to come now among us and just, Lord, take over and be the one who would speak and the ones who would listen. And Lord, just have your way with all of us. We love you and we thank you. We come this Father's Day. We honor all the fathers because we appreciate all of them, Lord. But most of all, you're the Father that we appreciate more than anything because you are our creator, our all in all, and Jesus is your name. Just have your way with us. Forgive our sins and keep us in Jesus' name. Amen. I know you've, Terrence mentioned it, but today is Brother Dick and Sister Gail's 15th, 62nd anniversary. So we, for her, for her to put up with him that long, we need to give her a gold medal. Okay, that's, all right. <laughs> yeah, okay, amen. But we thank God for people who can stay that long and be, you know, and be real good. Okay, John 10 and verse 30. All right. That's just the very familiar scripture with all of us and all. And remember, too, uh, Sister Monica and Sister Anna's classes will be practicing at 1250 today between the services and all. So just uh, bring them all up here, okay? Very familiar scripture. And look what Jesus said. He said, I and my Father are one. That's as simple as any language could be. It doesn't have to be interpreted. It doesn't have to be explained. It has to be believed. Because that's what he said. All right, let's go to Ephesians now. And we'll go to 3, verse 14. Mm. Exodus, excuse me. I better get my scriptures right. I, I better get Exodus myself because I've had it. Well, I've got mine written Ephesians. I want to read Ephesians. Okay. We'll read Exodus later on. 
I said, but I've got mine of Ephesians and I wanted to read that because of the thoughts and things that we're in. So Ephesians 3.14 says, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, Amen. that he would grant to you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. The whole family all the way brings it to the inner man. You may be seated, the Lord add his blessing to the reading of the word. Now, we have been, for the past two services, we've been talking on a very familiar thought with all of us, but as I just wanted you to keep in mind and think about the things. And I've asked the question over and over in this series part, we're talking and we're talking about the name of God. Well, the name of God. Now, Jesus said there in the scriptures in John, he said, I come in my father's name. Amen. Well, you know, if you go in your father's name, a son always goes or children always go in the name of the father. Now, then that way, my, my children are not, uh, as I always say, and I hope nobody's here by that name, but I always say that my kids are not McGillicuddy's. It's just a name I use. See, they are Dale's because they come in my name. All right. And see, Jesus, when he said, I, I come in my father's name, he wasn't talking about a second person. We don't believe that. We believe in one true and living God, all right? We don't believe in God in three persons. We've been through that through the, the eras of time and brought it out, and we believe the word of God to be true. And, and, and even the first commandment is, would break up the Trinity where it says, you know, that there's just one God, all right? Now, we've tried to be, uh, you know, all the way through and talking about the things in the scriptures about the name of God. And see, like I said, you'd say to most people, you say, what's the name of God? It's God. You know, it's God. Well, that you can make a God out of anything. So it's not to just say his name is God. God simply means an object of worship. All right. We've been through the Old Testament. We came up uh, our Wednesday, bringing it up to the, the part of of Jesus Christ when he was born on earth as a child. And see, they named him Jesus. Right? But why didn't they call him as the Bible had said in Isaiah, that you'll call his name Emmanuel? Right? But they didn't call him Emmanuel. They called him Jesus. Why? Because Gabriel told Mary to call his name Jesus. All right, because he'd save his people from their sins. All right, we've been through the many titles. See, God is just a title. Uh, you know, you, you want to check for a million dollars? I'll write it out and sign it, God. You want to go to the bank with it? No, <laughs> wouldn't work too good, would it? That's not jokes. That's not things of saying things wrong. It's truth. See? Because that word God is just meaning an object of worship. It's a title, just like in the Old Testament. When you start out in Genesis, it starts talking about God, and that's derived from the word Elohim, which means self-existing one, all right? Now, see, that's not his name. His name's not Elohim. You got people today, you know, that, that say the name of God is Yahweh. You got this group believing this way and that way. All of those, Yahweh, Jehovah, Elohim, all of those are titles. And they have connection to Almighty God because that's where they're developed from. Because when they said, when they looked at what they were trying to uh, define, to bring into being, into uh, English language and things, they would look and they'd see wordings and, and they'd try to translate. A translator doesn't translate by revelation. 
he's, he's not supposed to do that. He doesn't, he's not supposed to put his thoughts into it. He's supposed to translate by literal words. All right. And telling you what that word is. Okay. And that's the way he translates. So then Jehovah means like a father with his family, but that's not a, that's not his name. You say in the Old Testament, they call him Jehovah. Yeah, but we gave you the scripture there where he, where God himself said, by my, my, my name Jehovah was I never known. All right. See, then you could say, well, yeah, he was called this out of the other. That's right. But they couldn't pronounce that word. It's J-V-H-U. They couldn't pronounce it. So they done the best they could do and they made it Jehovah. But that's not the correct understanding. All right. Now, so we went through the many, many things of you can call him I am, you can call him Rose of Sharon, Lily of the Valley, Bright Morning Star, Alpha and Omega, Beginning and End, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. All of that is titles to a name. All right. You, you, you know, like me, I, I, I was a General Motors employee. That's one title. All right. Then I, I'm a pastor. That's another title. And I'm a father. That's another title. But that's not my name. See? Uh, that, that won't connect, see? But then when you say Samuel, say, wait a minute, that's my, then I know my name. All right. And see, then in the Bible, as they were trying to translate it down, they brought it down to the name of Jesus. All right. Because really they didn't translate it. Now listen to what I'm saying. The scholars never translated it to come out to Jesus. The angel Gabriel told them what to call him. The scholars translated it to come to Emmanuel. Right? But see, when it was finished, it couldn't be Emmanuel. So they understood Emmanuel, you know, was not his name, but his name is Jesus. So well, that's simple. Uh, that's, that's what I want you to think, simple. His name is Jesus. It's always been his name. Now, it wasn't used in the Old Testament under the form of Jesus written in your scriptures. It would use the titles of I am Jehovah and all like that. But remember what we were trying to get at? See, there's no salvation in to say the name of Jehovah. There's no salvation in to say Elohim. The salvation comes in the name of Jesus Christ because the Bible says that there's none other name given under heaven whereby that we're to be saved, but under the name of Jesus. All right, so Jesus is the very name of God. Now, we're not oneness or Jesus only, but they had their places. Back at the turn of the centuries, we'll get to it in a little bit, they begin to develop into uh, what they would call the Jesus only people, you know, or the oneness. And they had a truth because the name was coming back into understanding of the name of Jesus and what it meant. All right. But they didn't just say, well, okay, his name's Jet. You know, we just write it out, Jesus. I was showing my wife a little point there that you ought to look at some of the wording sometimes. And I showed it to her out of an emphatic diglot. Two different ways of spelling the name of Jesus and there's only a few verses apart. But yet it's the name Jesus. All right. See, like I've always tried to tell you, when you see things in the Bible, in Genesis it says, God created. God created. God created. But Genesis 2, what did it say? Lord God. Read your Bible. It just, you know, it just goes up to Lord God. Why? Because something else was coming into view. But is, there can be no salvation in titles. See, that's where your Catholic Church tried to put it, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, back in the dark ages, and that won't work. There's no salvation in titles. I don't care what title you call him. There's no salvation. 
There's only salvation in the name of Jesus Christ. All right. See, then that way we can know for surety where our truth is at in the word to find the name of Jesus, right? And see that what that means to us. All right. We read there, and everything in heaven, everything in earth is named Jesus. Now we know everything's not named Jesus. What's it talking about? It's talking about God and his offspring. We claim to be the children of God, correct? By the new birth, you and I are sons and daughters of a living God, right? So what is your father's name? And remember Jesus at the resurrection? You remember at the resurrection when he was appearing to Mary? And what did he say? He said, I go to my God and to your God. He said, I go to my father and your father. Read your Bible. It's all right. So now then, if we are the children of God, then, and being, we would call it from the Bible terminology, the bride of Christ, his wife. The wife takes on the name, right? I mean, my wife, her maiden name was Cash. Well, now, don't ask me ever to do a wedding to where that you women would keep your maiden name. I won't do it. I don't care what you're saying. I'm not going to do it because you're not supposed to go that way. You're supposed to relinquish your name and take the name of the husband, right? And see, as the children of God, then our father's name is Jesus. You say, but, but, but that's, that's just too, no, that's not too simple. It's the truth. His name is Jesus. Well, then you are Miss Jesus. Right? Because you're taking on the name of your husband. And as the children of God, we take it on the name of our father. So our father's name is Jesus. That's the only name that God ever had. Everything else is titles. Everything else is means this or means that or got a meaning to it, but the name of Jesus. And I've been trying to make a simple point to you. No title, Jehovah, I am, Yahweh, anything. No title can contain the entire meaning of God. No title can. Are you listening? But the name of Jesus is the entire full meaning of Almighty God. So it takes all of those titles. That's why it came through the Old Testament. It took 4,000 years to bring forth Christ upon the earth. You know, not that they didn't pronounce the word Jesus back there, just get the point. The point is that Jesus Christ is our Savior. All right. The flesh man was not in the Old Testament. We got in a little sense, you know. He was not back there in flesh, but he was back there to show many titles and many references pointing down. But then one day, God didn't even choose a prophet to bring the name. Yet he did through that, because when he say Jehovah, he was trying to say the name Jesus. But he sent an angel, Gabriel, straight from glory to deliver to Mary the name to call the baby. Amen. Right? All right. Then we went through that even when, it, when he went over, when Mary went to Elizabeth, and Elizabeth was pregnant about six months with little John there, but he hadn't moved, the Bible said. But when the name of Jesus was proclaimed, he leaped in his mother's womb. It's not just J-E-S-U-S. -S. You know, there's plenty of Jesuses in the world today, but there's only one Lord Jesus Christ. There's many people can say, my name is Jesus. 
but we don't worship them because there's one Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible said in his name one. All right. See, then all of the titles, that's what I've been getting to, you look at. You take all of those titles that you can bring up. And when you do, all of them put together equals out to Jesus. Because that's the only name God ever had. Show me another name. You say, well, Yahweh. No, no, go back and find out where it come from. Those things were titles to a name, just like Jehovah, just like Elohim, just like only, it was titles to a name, but it wasn't the name. I have many titles, but my name is Samuel. See? All right. And see then, by being a Dale, I came in my father's name, Dale. All right. See then, what we should think about is looking at Jesus Christ to see who he really is. Now, is God real to you or is he just a spirit? I know the Bible, what, 524, God is a spirit, John 524. They that worship him must worship in spirit and truth. That's true, but you know God's real. God's not just the thoughts of your imagination. That's all of these other uh, philosophies. The old Indian, he worshiped the moon, the stars, and the thing. And he would get down and pray until he would feel an anointing. All religions deal in that way, right? Some spiritual anointing. And he would be contacting what he thought was God. All right. But see, you don't have to get down and pray. Now, come on, I ain't doing away with prayer. I'm trying to put it in the right place. Listen. You don't have to get down and pray to be able to contact God. Why don't you just open up your heart and talk to him? Amen. Yeah, but I got to get this way. I got to pray over here. I got to get on my knees. I got to do this. Where's that in the Bible? You know? If somebody's about ready to whack your head off, you ain't got time to ask him to let you pray. You better start believing. Right? So what is prayer? That's the point I've been emphasizing. Prayer is a contact, you know, say between you and God. But do you have to pray out loud for him to hear you? No. He hears the very whispers and thoughts of your heart. The Bible says, pray without ceasing, right? The scripture. Well, you know where to do that. But you know, the monks sitting up on them hills over there, they get in there and they pray all day long. The next morning they get up and they go in there and they pray all day long. Now, that would be praying without ceasing. But you can't do that, right? We, we got to make a living. We got to work. We got to live. We got to do. So what does it mean to pray without ceasing? Keep the right mental attitude in your thoughts and you can talk to God all day long. And nobody hears it but you and God. Because he knows the very intents of our heart. He knows the reason why we're praying a certain way. But it's like I've asked you before, why is it that we can call Jesus one time, we can pray and seemingly even maybe get anointed and feel good about it, and it not come to pass? Then sometimes you're just walking alone and something just seems to contact you and speak to you and you say, thank you, Jesus. And you know what? You go find out what you've been asking for takes place. My point is, could it be not just trying to find letters on a page to be able to pronounce a name, but to find out that that name is the name of a person? 
Is your God real? Is he just the thoughts of your mind? Remember what I said about the Indian? He worships. He feels the spirit. He puts some kind of a name to his God and he can feel things. But is that all we want to do? And I'm kind of like the old fella said that time, you know, when they talk about all this praying, the Catholics want you to come pray to the Virgin Mary and then she prays for you or pray to this and they pray for you. I'm not throwing off on them. I'm just making a point. I like what the old man said. It was in trouble. He said, when I'm in trouble, I don't have to go through no secretary. That I want to talk to the head man. You know, I don't want to have to go through somebody else. All right. So what are we talking about? The name of Jesus. You can call that name Jesus. What about in Acts? You remember where the guys, they, they decided that they were going to, seven of them, what were the sons of Scuba, is that right in there? Seven of them, they decided that they were going to go down because they'd seen Paul and they'd seen him praying and they'd seen things take place. And they could hear him praying in the name of Jesus. And they knew things. And they decided they'd go pray. Now, remember the scripture? They said, we adjure thee, or the demons, you know, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches. That was good. You had it lined up with a name, and you had a good representation to go with it as to what Paul preaches. But you know what happened to them? The demons jumped on them and tore them up. So it's not to just say Jesus, but to know who you're praying to. It's been the whole point I've tried to make. It's to know who you're praying to. Do you know him as your personal savior? Or you just know what somebody else told you about him. Or somebody else told you you got to do this. Somebody else says you got to repent. Somebody else says you got to be baptized. Somebody else says you got to do this. Or have you experienced that? Because only by personal experience, see, Paul had a personal experience of Jesus Christ, right? Amen. But those sons of Scuba, they were just going by what they thought he said. So they were saying what somebody else said. Remember, that don't work. It's a personal revelation. They asked them there, and it was in the book of Acts, you know, it was used the other day, where they said, how did this man wind up healed? And they said, through faith, not just the name, it says the name and faith in the name hath made this man whole. Not just the name, and not to just say some faith or thought, they put a name with it. And see, Jesus said, ask anything in my name and I'll give it to you. You say, and I know you, if you'll just think truthfully, you prayed and prayed and you thought you contacted God. You got feelings, you got emotions, you got things that we believe in all of that because it's in the Bible. But somehow it just didn't seem to work. But then a time happens that something just happens and you just receive a knowledge. You ever had it that way? You ever been healed by confessing God's word? Because that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to keep confessing it. We confess that he's already healed us. Not confess for him to, to heal us. Confess that he's already healed us. Thank him for it. See, because you're reminding him of what he says in his word. You know, you know, God, I don't think God gets upset because we remind him what he said. I think he's glad of that. I think he's saying, well, my children are just like me because remember, God takes his own word. He's got to believe his own word to be right. You said God to believe his own word? Well, he does, don't he? We see, that's what I'm trying to get at. Are we trying to find letters on a page they would spell out Jehovah, 
some way that they could finally derive now to get that JVHU and they could derive it and bring it out and make it it's some kind of a great name. And they said, we got the name of God. Well, they just wasted time. Because the Bible said to call his name Jesus. No. Why not take it from that order of what you're thinking about? And think about, is he a person to you? I know I ask silly things and I make points and all, but I try. I asked my wife yesterday, I said, you call up Wade on the telephone and Wade answers, do you think you're talking to Terrence? No. no. I know it's not Terrence if I hear the voice. And it wasn't Terrence I called, you know what I mean? Is it right? He said, well, what are you getting at? Do you know his name enough to know who the person is? Because remember, if he's got a name, now here's our point, listen. If he's got a name, he's a person. Spirits and things like those things is not, they don't have names. It takes something that God created the angels, but then when he did, he moved them in and some wound up with names. Why? Because they wound up being closer to what they are. But what about a name? Now you call somebody on the phone, like I'm saying, you call somebody on the telephone and you say, okay, you know, it's very hard for me to disguise my voice. I call most of you and you say, Brother Dale, you don't, who is it? You don't do like that. You, you know who it is. Why? Because you've heard my voice so long until it's part of your thinking. Well, now really, now listen to what I'm getting at. Sorry, I just try to make something simple. I know it, I confuse and make it, but still, I try. You realize that in your mind's eye view, if I call Wade on the phone, he answers the phone, you know, now in modern science we got now, you know, we look at each other. We used to laugh about that about 40 years ago, 50 years ago. You know, you used to talk about that. Some of you older ones remember. You ever remember what you said? So you can't answer the phone, you put your clothes on. All right? That's what we all laughed about. Because it's true. You just see the people. Right? Well, what if I dialed Wade? And Terrence appeared on the screen. That's not right. It's not the person I'm wanting to talk to. Why don't you think about Jesus Christ as being real? Well, he's just a spirit. Now, we follow our prophet's message. I know the brother, I know his face, but I can't. Pull nothing else out, but I've seen him somewhere. But we believe God sent a prophet to us in the last day. Amen. And I got him laying here if anybody wants him. See, God is a being. Amen. He's not just a, say, a spook or a front floating around. That's the old Indian talking to the things, you know. I'm not throwing off on the old Indian because you remember them old Indians were doing pretty good. <laughs> you know that Geronimo, probably the reason they couldn't ever capture the old boy, Geronimo saw visions because he entered the spirit world. See, he, he could do those things by being as he was. That's why they call him the shaman, the guy, they, what they called him for the Indian medicine man. But listen, he said, what are you getting at? I'm getting to one point. When you're praying, do you ever think about who you're praying to? I mean, really, do you seriously ever think about who you're praying to. Well, I just pray to the Father. I pray to this. Well, I'm sorry, I have no problem. But if he's a being, not like the wind, remember, the prophet explaining, God is not even, listen, we call him omnipresent. We try to make it do it. 
You know that God is not omnipresent except for the fact that he's omniscient because he's a being. Now, wait a minute. You're trying to limit him something. I'm not limiting something. I'm telling the truth. God is a being. He's not like the wind just blowing about. He wasn't that before the world ever begun. He wasn't that before time ever begun. Or just some floating spirit. Just, we get into all these uh, movies and things and we try to think things out like they do. And they got these kind of something they need, this here is supposed to be this. And this. No, God is real. He's real. He's a person. He's the only person. He's not the first person or the second person or the third person. <laughs> He's not none of them. He is the person. He's almighty God himself made manifest in flesh. Is that what the scripture says? God took upon a form, as I said, we got to the baby talking about Jesus. God took on a form of a human being. And in soul, that man we look at there, that little baby we look at, you remember we ended up the other day talking about Jehovah crying in a cradle? And Jehovah with no teeth? Jehovah playing? Why can't you think that way? It happened. Jehovah's a carpenter making a living. Why can't we think of it that way? Because it's real. It brings him the more real to you. And not to just some spirit that you, well, he has no form or nothing. He's just floating around everywhere. No. You think you're real and think he's not real? You mean this wood is more real or more tangible or what the words is for it than almighty God who made the tree? He said, well, you, you don't believe God can just be a spirit? Yeah, he can appear to you. Yeah. He can talk to you. He can do things. But he's also real. Why don't you try talking to him sometime? Why don't you think about your prayers as a contact between you and almighty God? Is he ever that real to you? Have you ever felt his presence to where you knew that there was just a presence with you? Ever done that? That's wonderful, isn't it? It's marvelous. But what if he walked right out in front of you? You say you can't do it? He's done it. What about when Brother Brown saw Jesus out in the field up there at Jeffersonville, standing up in the air? I like the way he says it. He said, Hoffman's head of Christ is the closest. Now, he didn't say it looked just like him. Listen to what he said. He said, it's the closest of anything man has ever painted of Jesus Christ. You know why? He saw him. He saw him. You going to take his word for it that he saw him? Why not? You can take his word on everything else. Why can't you believe that? But you see people who have never experienced supernatural things to know is hard for them to believe. I understand that. You got one person that has seen things the other person has never seen it like that. It's hard to get that person that hadn't seen it to understand what you saw. But why can't you just believe simplicity that God is real? Do we talk about one true and living God, but do we believe in one true and living God? Jesus said, if you've seen me, am I quoting scripture? 
He said, you've seen my father. He said, because my father and I are one. Now he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. Well, what's the father look like? You don't think like that? What does the father look like? Well, now Jesus, he was six foot tall and he was, that's it. And the father was a fat old guy. So, so. Now that's not what he said. He said, if you've seen me, he said, you've seen the father. He said, why do you ask to see me? He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. But his name is Jesus. Why do you have trouble calling his name Jesus? He said, everything to ask, he said, everything you do in word and deed, do all in the name of Jesus Christ. But now listen, I tried to state it. I've made it over and over and I want you to think because if I say Jesus, your mind automatically falls to a human flesh. And you say, well, when did Jesus come into being? It'll fall to a baby in a cradle. It'll fall to a human being, as we call it. Flesh. You know, I wonder what that man who threw them three Hebrew children in that fiery furnace, and he gets up the next morning, and he looks down in there, and he said, didn't we throw three in? They said, yeah. He said, well, there's four down there now. And watch what he said. He said, and one of them is likened to the Son of God. Now, why would that heathen king say that? Because one thing for sure, if there was something else in there and they wouldn't get burned up, it had to be God, right? All right. And if it was God and he could see it, he knew God had to change a form in some way to be able to him to see that. So he said, like unto the Son of God. His name is Jesus. What about it then? God has never had but one name. His name is Jesus. All right. There's no salvation in titles. Now listen to what I'm saying. We, we, you know, we come from that to the point we saw where the Catholic Church can, can prove it, you know, that they changed the mood or way of baptism from the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to Father, Son, and Holy Ghost down about 6.0, developed fully about 6.06, started in 3.25. Right. And see, they say and keep saying Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Well, I believe in Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. But Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is simply Lord Jesus Christ. That's simple, isn't it? Simple to us who understand, but ask the theologian about it. He can't think that simple. Because really, see, it's got to be revealed to you. Now, letters on a page, writing of J-E-S-U-S, there's no revelation to just look at that. That's natural human writing. But when you see who that really is, And you know who you're talking to. Like I said it a minute ago, you call somebody on the phone and you know who you're talking to, you know, if you know the person. In your mind's eye view, you can see the person that you're talking to. You see, well, in your mind's eye view, not a, now I ain't talking about these telephones now that, that, to where you can really see the whole person. I'm, I'm talking about that you can see by your mind's eye view of who you're talking to. Huh? And by seeing by your mind's eye view, you see the actual person that's there. Like I said, have you ever thought about it so much until that you could bring into mind a picture in your mind of what Jesus Christ looks like? 
You know, a lot of them done that and done a lot of drawings and they come out a whole lot messed up. Right? You ever seen all that? I mean, there's hundreds of different drawings of Jesus. I mean, none of them fit the thing that Brother Branham said. Well, I'm just dumb enough to stay with what he said. If he saw Jesus and he looked like Hoffman's, then I, I like Hoffman's. They're back here. You know what? See, people will say, well, why you got two pictures back there? You look at one of them, he's young. Look at the other one, he's old. My sins cause that problem. So I'm in the middle. And that's the reason those pictures have always been there. I caused that him to look like he did when he got beat. My sins. Surely, why can't I believe him as being real? Yes, but Brother Dale, he's never spoke to me. Have you ever heard him speak? Yeah, but not in your words and thoughts of speaking. You ever heard him to just tell you something wasn't right? Yeah, but see, you're, you're making it down. It's you're bringing him down to where he's more tangible, seemingly. You, you try to make him more that we can, well, if he is the creator that created us as tangible, then he's greater than us as being tangible. Why wouldn't we think of that? Why wouldn't we consider that we know the truth? What about the religious world that is in total darkness, believing in a Trinity concept, and today they're singing and worshiping and saying, Jesus, Jesus, we love you. But go ask them about their doctrine of the Trinity and they'll let you know they don't believe it like that. What's their mind's eye view of what Jesus looks like? You understand what I'm saying? Why don't we look at it as a person? Why don't we look at God as a real being, a person? And then you can begin to visualize more and more that he can have a name. That he's not just a spirit floating around. That he's real. Why can't we just pull it to that understanding that it's not understanding letters on a page. It's understanding that name is that person. Is that true? Let me go down to commerce. And you say, Donnie Fabush. Well, yeah, yeah, he sells cars up on the other end of town. He's kind of a tall guy and he's a little crazy, but he's all right. Amen. You know? You understand what I'm getting at? They know him by his name. Well, do you know God by his name? Instead of just saying, well, I've got to call him Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I thought we believed that the bride of Christ was to come into the adoptional stages in the last days that she could speak in his name. I thought we believed our in in Mark, where it says, you say to this mountain, be moved, and don't doubt. I thought we believed the Bible. But do we believe him as being real? Why don't you talk to him like a real person? <laughs> Remember the story reason I say that? I don't make light of nobody. I'm not doing nothing. But Brother Branham in his beginnings, you know, he said he'd heard people say, you pray this way, or you get down this way, you go down that way, you go this way. Get... He was trying to find some way to contact. After it's all over with, he just held it down and said, Lord, just listen to me. You know, we might change some of our thoughts of our mind if we realize God knows our, our thoughts more than our literal words that we say. 
right? But is your God real? I'm talking about a real God because this is a background part for coming up, the Lord willing, into some thoughts. We're going all the way back again and pick up and come down. But what about it? Why would a, the Bible and Revelation 3 and 1 talk about in the fifth church age that thou hast a name that you're living, but you're dead? See, they had lost the name of Jesus Christ. Now that's, see that, that just shows the human mind. Now they never lost the name of Jesus. The, the Trinitarian people call him Jesus. They never lost that. What did they lose? What was lost in the dark ages that the prophet would call it and say his name was lost in the fifth church age, but said in the sixth church age, you see it coming back to his name. And he said, right in between the sixth church age and the seventh, he said the name of Jesus. You go back and check your history tonight. Between those two parts, you got your oneness people coming back in right at the turn of the century, and you got your Jesus only people. That was a move of God for that day. But we don't want to believe that. That's just like believing the name of God is Jesus. We don't want to believe that, that Martin Luther and Lutheran church started out with a man that was led of God. And the whole world was waiting on Luther to proclaim the just shall live by faith. And God took that and based it and converted the world. But we don't want to believe it. We're looking back at them as Lutheran. They are out doing everything in the world. They do it all. What does that make any difference? That ain't the guys that started it. Where did you and I come from? But think about it. This is trying to get a little point, and then we'll quit. See, then that name of Jesus being restored, the Bible calls it during Revelation an open door. An open door. Between the sixth church age and the seventh, there was a door open, which was a revelation of his name. Now, in the ages that they, as I always emphasize it, you know, or try to, to you say the name was lost. Did they call him Jim, Joe, or Charlie? No, they called him Jesus. But they lost the revelation of who he was and what he was. And they called him the third person of the Trinity. Right? They lost the revelation of supreme deity. It didn't change the letters on the page. They called him Jesus. But mankind had so perverted it until the real true meaning of God in his church had went so far away until the Bible writes it up as saying, we got to open the door because they've done forgot all about me. The revelation of God's supreme deity of who he was. Not at those three gods. See, that was what was lost, the word. The word was lost through the ages and they wouldn't allow the people to read it. They forbid mankind to read it and they'd write in Latin and speak in Latins and things. The only time they spoke in English is when they told you what you had to do. That ain't no joke, that's true, right? When they come down to tell you and you were up there confessing your problems and they told you what to do, that's the only time they spoke to you in English. The rest of the time they wanted to keep it in Latin because they didn't want you to know anything about God. But I keep saying, is your God real or just the thoughts of your mind? Have you ever had an experience with God to where that you're not just saying, mama said it, daddy said it, right. uncle said it, aunt said it, or whoever said it? Yeah. Have you ever just got down to the point of seeing him as being real? then you'll see that it wasn't J-E-S-U-S -S that was lost in the ages. They still called him Jesus. 
but they called him what they had been taught to call him, the third person, second person or something. Can that still be happening right today? Or is God real to you? You call him on the phone. You know what I'm talking about. And you're praying who you're praying to. Are we praying to the Holy Ghost to get him to pray to the Father and to do it all in Jesus' name? Or are we praying to Jesus himself, which we know is to be an almighty God? What about it? No salvation except in the name of Jesus Christ. That name was so marvelous and wonderful that it takes all. Now listen, I said it over and over to you for three services. It takes all of them titles. Any title you can come up with, Rosa Sharon, Lily the Valley, Bright Morning Star, Alpha and Omega, I Am, Elohim, Jehovah, Yahweh's, anything you want to call it, it takes all that put together Amen. to be that one name yeah. called Jesus. Amen. And you agreed well ago when you'd say, I come in my Father's name and I come in my Father's name, so that would make all of us as being having one name. All the children of God have the same name. Well, I'll call you Jesus. No, see, you're getting so carnal. You're not even listening. It's not to call you Jesus. That's not what we're talking about. But it's to know who we are. You realize only a Christian has a right to call the name of Jesus. The rest, God permits it and allows it and honors it. But only a Christian has a right to call his name. Because he's the only one that's really supposed to know his name. And we're talking about Father's Day. You remember as kids, and you watch your father do things, and, and you do a lot of that now. I watch these kids around here and I see them and then I just laugh because I look and I'll see them. I'll see you walk a certain way and the way you do and I look and see your children doing the same thing. We call it follow, following into father's footprints, you know. Well, that's good. I thought we were supposed to follow in our real father's footprints. The one who saved us, the one who gave his life for us. Amen. Now I'm bringing it down to a thought and I'll jump a lot of the message but to get to this. Do you believe enough in one true and living God to believe this statement? That to Jehovah the old is the Jesus of the new. You really believe that? That's what I told a Jehovah Witness one day. I said, I'm a more Jehovah Witness than you are. You are. I said, yeah, because Jehovah the old Jesus of the new. And he just looked at him. The old man grabbed his arm and took him to the truck because he, he didn't want that boy to ask no more questions. But do you really believe Jehovah the old is Jesus of the new? Or did he change somewhere in between? Now, let me ask you this way where you'll get my point. Most everybody thinks Jehovah the old was a mean old daddy. He killed everybody for whatever they done and wrote 10 commandments and all he wanted to do was beat you lined up and beat you to death through the old test. Right. Everybody says Jehovah, you know, he, there was no love back there. Now, where did you get that idea? It ain't in the Bible. You mean Jehovah meaning like a father with his family? In the Old Testament, Jehovah as we'd call him, or God was a God of hate. But Jesus is a God of love. Yeah. 
You got a lot of mercy and grace in the Old Testament. The law itself is God in letter form. The Ten Commandments is God. If you read it different, you wouldn't read it. Thou shalt not kill. You would read it from a different thing and say, Thou shalt not kill. Huh? Is it a God of hatred? But yet in the human realm, listen, even your prophet said one day, he said, I used to think that God hated me, but Jesus loved me. He said, until I found out they were the same person. Right. Now, how can he be a person of hatred or arrogant, mean in the Old Testament and come into the New Testament and turn the other cheek and be the God of love? You're not in your Bible. You can't believe it the way I'm talking about it. When I say Jehovah the old is Jesus of the new. Nothing changed. He just stepped into human flesh. Right? But do you really believe that that little baby that was laying in the cradle was almighty God? You really believe that? I've had people say, well, who run the world while he was in the womb? I said, he just spoke it before he went to the womb and that took care of it. It'll run until it gets through. But see, that's what we think, you know. But do you really believe? Because the Bible said God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. The Bible said in him dwelt the fullness of the Godhead bodily. You mean when he walked there? Yeah, when he walked there, he was Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The fullness of the Godhead bodily. He was all of them titles. He was all of them Jehovah's and Elohim's and Father, Son's and Holy Ghost. He was all of that. His name was Jesus. So then the Jehovah the old, Jesus of the new. Now let's turn it around. The Jesus of the old is still the Jehovah of today. Because you know what Jehovah means? Father with his family. He never lost any title. I've always tried to get you to look at one thing. You go back before the world, and this is what always has helped me. You go back before the world, and you see. You talk about him having attributes, and he never gained one attribute coming into the world. He displayed his attributes. He had his attributes before the world. Huh? Well, why can't we see it now? He never done away with Jehovah. He's still a father with his family. He never done away with Elohim that means self-existing because he's still the self-existing God who exists in his people. But how about your prophet saying it like this? He said, the Godhead is not complete without you. Do you really believe that? Do you really believe it? That the Godhead's not complete without you? Well, come on, why don't you think about what is the Godhead? Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Son. We are the sons and daughters of a living God. But he's not complete without me and you. But do you really see the Jehovah the Old and Jesus of the New? You know what the Apostle Paul, I don't have time to read them, but I got them laying here. You know, the Apostle Paul was the only one of the apostles that knew that. I'm quoting Brother Branham. Paul said, because of the abundance of revelation. Brother Branham said, Paul had more revelation than any of the rest of them. He said, because he had the revelation, 
Jehovah the old was Jesus of the new. The Apostle Paul had a deeper revelation than any of the apostles. Now, here's my ending point because I try to make it. If Paul understood that Jehovah the old was Jesus of the new, I got three, I think it is, laying the quotes. Then what did Peter believe? What did John, what did Matthew, what did they believe? You know what they believed? Now listen. They believed that Jehovah the old was Jesus of the new. Well, you just said they didn't, didn't believe that. No, they believed it in the lower understanding. Their understanding of God was one true and living God, right? Read Peter in his writings and see he's not a Trinitarian. He believes in one true and living God. Look at John and all of them. Paul just had a deeper revelation that would bring down to the end time. Paul believed in the supreme deity. John believed in the supreme deity. Peter believed in the supreme deity. But their revelation was just not the depth of the apostle Paul. Come on, explain it some other way to me. Peter didn't believe in another God or didn't believe Jesus was a second person or something like that. He believed that that was the same almighty God that was in the Old Testament. But he just didn't believe it as the depth of the apostle Paul. You know why? You believe the prophet saw Jesus standing in the field up there in Jeffersonville, right? You believe that? He said he did. What did Paul see on the road at Damascus? What did Paul see? Now, don't go so carnal with me. He didn't have to see him standing there to look like Hoffman over here that Brother Branham would talk here. Don't make me carnal. He saw Jesus. Brother Branham, what did he say about it? No wonder he'd make it. He said there was no way that Jew was going to call that pillar of fire Lord. He saw him. From his mind's eye view, maybe not a Hoffman's of a picture that Brother Branham saw Jesus. I don't have to go that way. He saw him from his mind's eye view. And it was so confusing until he said, <laughs> these other guys are talking about spiritual beings. Remember, he went up with them, stayed just a little bit, and then he left. He said, they're, they're talking about this, and they, they, don't, they don't see what I, I, I saw something real. Right. But that's why I called him Lord. You know, he called him Lord before he got the new birth. Paul yeah. oh, saw Jesus. He saw something real. And he believed that Jehovah the old was Jesus of the new. Peter and them saw him by revelation, right? Paul saw him by revelation. That's what I'm getting at. Asking you and I the question, have you ever seen God by revelation? When you ever see God by revelation, in his word. They'll never talk you out of it. That's right. That's right. Now, sorry, folks. 
But what about all the people of this message that is left? Yet they preached Jesus for 40, 50 years. They never saw Jesus. They never saw Jesus like Peter saw him. Peter saw him as Almighty God. Paul saw him as a total, supreme, almighty deity that would tie in and come all the way to this day. And the end time revelation is that Jehovah the old is Jesus of the new with the same revelation Paul had. You got know that. Come on, musicians. You see him as who he is, then you'll see his name is Jesus. You'll see him and know that his name is Jesus. And then you can talk to him. God don't have to, you don't have to get down and practice your wording to contact God. Now let me say this, and that's plain language. Do you know what communion means? To communicate. But you know really what it is? You shut your mouth and you listen to God. Prior is that right there. We think prayer is all of these great words we pour out and we have to tell him all of our problems. You ever explain to God what the trouble was? Now be sensible. You know it's true. You say, Lord, you know, so and so did, so and, and I done, and I done this, Lord, and I done that. He knows more about it than you do. Yet you're trying to explain it to him. Why don't you sometimes sit down? You heard me say it, I get up. I had a wonderful two nights up in the mountains. I never got out of the bed from 10.30 to 7.15. Wonderful rest. The next night, one time I had to get up. Last night I was up about six times. Well, you know what? I pray and I ask God and they take care of it. You know what I do a lot of times? I just go in there and sit down. I just sit there a while. And I said, Lord, you know the troubles, you know the problems, you know everything. Just take care of it. Now, you got anything you want to say to me? You know what? He might talk to you. He might do that. But just don't get scared if he does. You ask him to. He might start talking to you. But communication, we think, is blabber mouth as we're using all the words. Communication is shut your mouth and listen to God. There's a greater prayer than all the words you could pray all day. And you can stay in that attitude from morning till night and pray without ceasing because you're in an attitude of prayer. About it. Let's stand. What do we got? That's uh, Psalm 224 in the red book. Who is your God? And what is his name? His name is Jesus. Amen. That fulfills all the Bible. In that one name. Go ahead. Anybody have a need? The altar's all open. Anybody have a need? My Savior goes before me And with his loving hand He leads the way And in each step I whisper, I adore thee Oh, what joy do you know his name? Do you know who you're praying to? Each step I take, I know that he will guide me. Do you know that he can hear? He ever leads 
says his ears is always open. Until someday. His hand is always that stretched. Because remember, no matter if you read Old Testament or New, you're supposed to be believing the Jehovah the Old is Jesus of the New. The same God. My faith keeps in the waver When up ahead I see A chasm wide Loving It's then I turn, turn And, and look up to my Savior I am gone When he is by my side Each step by day why don't you try talking to him sometime by shutting up and just sit down and listen? Yeah, but I've got to explain to him what I want. Oh, glory. you got to explain to God what you want when he knows your thoughts before you think them. He knows your troubles, your problems, and everything. You don't have to explain it to him. Sometimes just sit there and listen. And get up and go back to bed and say, thank you, Lord. Wake me up in an hour or so, Lord. Father, we thank you for today and your love and your grace and to us, and we commit everything to you. We leave it in your hand in Jesus' name. You're dismissed. Pray one for another. Remember, Wade, this afternoon, 